Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical house plants. For today's review video, and I can't believe I haven't done this plant yet, I want to talk about no other than the Syngonium Albo Variegata. And I can't believe I haven't done this video yet, basically, because essentially, with the exception of the Monstera adansonii, this is a household weed, is what I call it in my house at least, because I have got propagates of it absolutely stonking everywhere. So I keep cutting this back, I keep propagating it. I think in this conservatory alone, I've got about four or five different propagated cuttings from it. In and around the house I've got another three or four plants. There's this one as well. This is not the original mother plant. I will add a video hopefully over myself here that you can see the original plant, which is almost fully reverted at this point, but I'll come back to reversion in just a minute. For everybody who's returning back, welcome back. As always, you know that there's chapters at the bottom there, so if you want to skip to your favorite section, please do so. For the new people, it's nice to have you. Just a bit of a caveat before I start any of these review videos is that these opinions are massively biased to myself. Can't believe I'm saying this for the millionth time, but hopefully it kind of makes sense as to why I'm saying them. This is obviously a review of how I found my specific plant, or plants in this case, and how I found growing them in my conditions. So in this situation with this plant, it's in my conservatory, it's in the household environment, it might be different from yours, and growing it in my location, which is in the UK, and all that that means. From grey skies to wet and cold winters to unbearably hot summers, believe it or not, sometimes like today. But just bear that in mind when you're watching this as well. It might differ slightly from your opinion, but if you've already got this plant and you feel like sharing your experiences, please do so in the comments down below. I know that there's a large community of people now that come to these videos to watch them and learn before they potentially maybe invest in buying this specific plant. So yeah, let's move on to the first topic. So coming into the background of the Albo Syngonium podophyllum is the full name, if I'm not mistaken. I have heard another common name for this recently, and I'm trying to remember if I can, I'll put it up there. Somebody mentioned this on my Instagram, and I was just like, ooh, what plant is that? I need to go and check it out. And I'm just like, oh, it's the Albo Syngonium. I'm just like, okay, they've given it like a more common name now, which is kind of cool, I didn't know that. Also, if you're not following me already on Instagram, please do consider giving me a follow. The link is down below in the description, especially for the people that want to have kind of prolonged conversations. I'm only usually on the YouTube video comments for a few days after I first posted. I've got too many videos at the moment to be going back to every single common thread. It gets a bit ridiculous and I've got a full-time job as well as doing this. So if you want to reach out to me, Instagram is probably going to be the best place. But coming back onto the background of this plant. And as with most people a few years back, and I will, obviously the title of the video will have how long I've had this plant. I'll see if I can find a picture from my plant care app and add it here to see what it was like when I first got it. But as with most people, I was trying years back now, before I went to get my Albo Monstera, there was this thing within the community that were just like, look, if you can't get the Alba Monstera and you've not had a white variegated plant and you're struggling to find that and you want something that's as easy basically to grow, consider getting the Albo Syngonium. And I'm just like, oh, okay. At that point, I'd only ever had the Syngonium Neon Robusta, I think it is, the, the, the blushy pink Syngonium that at least here in the UK and I'm guessing Europe is pretty much everywhere really in all the big box stores, garden centers, plant stores, you can find that one everywhere basically. This isn't one that at least back then you could find in plant stores. So it did take some digging around, I'll talk about a bit more of that in the availability, but I did get my hands on it and it, yeah, it's true, it does have that lily white variegation that you get with the Alba Monstera. 
it's having both of those plants now, I can kind of say they're on par in terms of ease. The Syngonium Albo is a lot faster, just considering how many propagates I've got of it everywhere, I should tell you something. The one thing I will touch on now is the variegation and reversion. With my Albo Monstera, if you've got a decent level of variegation, if it occasionally throws out the green leaf because it doesn't bring out leaves as quickly, and I'll talk about that in Speed of Growth, as the Syngonium, you don't always necessarily need to be staying on top of chopping back green leaves so you can keep the variegation going because it's unstable. The Albo Syngonium does have an unstable variegation, so if you want to keep that variegation going, it will quite quickly try to revert back towards this green form, chop it back. You've then got propagates, and I've got too many propagates of just all green Syngonium now that are reverted Syngonium Albos, but you will still get that. And even with the Syngonium album, I will say that if it's only one or two green leaves, you could still get a third leaf. Usually the third leaf is the litmus test for me. If it's bought a third leaf that is green in a row, that bit will get chopped off and then propagated. But again, we'll touch a bit more on propagation with that one. But yeah, I've had it for a long period of time. It grows insanely well. There is a specific pest that I'm struggling with at the moment, and we can talk a bit more about that in the pest section. But yeah, a very, very cool looking plant with semi-stable variegation. I mean, generally speaking, as long as you stay on top of it, you can kind of keep the variegation going. It doesn't drastically want to go back to green necessarily. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the background section. Let's move on to the next topic. Now, speed of growth with this one, fast just fast. I don't know if I've got any other plant in my collection that grows quite as fast as this. Maybe the Golden Pothos? But I'll benchmark it the way that I usually do with the Golden Pothos, for instance. If the Golden Pothos will bring out two or three leaves in the summer, the Albo Syngonium will do the same. And potentially maybe even a few more, depending if it's really happy in its location. Now with this specific propagate, and this is a, it might not look like it, but it's a brand new pot because yesterday it was so dry that it decided to throw itself off the shelf, break its terracotta pot, which was half the size of this. I have now since moved it into this because it was getting to the point in the summer with this specific propagate in the small pot that it was, that it was needing to get watered every day or every other day. And I'm just like, right, you need a repot anyway. So let's go up a size. But yeah, I mean, fast, just, ridiculously fast. This one growing stem with all of these leaves at the bottom, which theoretically at this point I could potentially just chop off here, put it in uh, a propagation media and grow an entirely new plant from this bit. This didn't really exist three months ago. So that gives you a bit of an indication. It can be a very, very fast grower and you do get some beautifully variegated leaves. You do also get some reverted leaves that are slightly on the green side. You can see with this one, and I always used to do the, the warts and all, there's a slight discoloration on that leaf and we'll touch on that in a bit. And same goes with that one there. But in terms of speed, just watch it grow essentially. It's, it's fast. <laughs> He's propagation with this one, and I think I've already mentioned this a few times now, it just propagates beautifully. I don't think I've put it in any form of media that it didn't take. It went well in sphagnum moss, it went well in perlite, it went well in pond, it did well in water, it did well going directly into soil. I will say it does take a moment, especially if you've got High, ver high levels of variegation on the foliage. If you're putting in a reverted green form, that just grows crazy, basically. But if you do have some variegation, it, it might take a moment to root out. Nothing ridiculously long, but it will still take a beat to root out. But after that, just watch it grow, essentially. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I have got propagates and little pockets of Albo Syngoniums all over the house. I think out of all of my Syngoniums, and granted I don't have any of the kind of standard more common forms, ridiculously enough, in this house, but now I do have the Syngonium Maria. The Syngonium Maria is still slower than this one. This grows like a weed and it wants to vine very, very quickly. 
I have never grown it up anything, but we'll come on to that in accessories. But generally, in terms of ease of propagation, stupidly easy and very, very, very fast. The interesting thing, and this is going to lead me quite nicely into availability, when I was first getting this plant, it wasn't that affordable and there wasn't that many around. And I'm wondering whether or not, having grown this plant now, whether or not people were slightly holding it back and keeping the prices relatively high because it was quite, eh, it was relatively pricey for what you were getting back when people were first becoming aware of this plant. And especially because again, that, that kind of uh, relationship between it and the Monstera Albo existed and people were kind of kept comparing the two together. It drove the prices up considerably basically. But having grown it now and I'm just like, why was it anywhere near that expensive? Because this thing grows like a weed. And I'll tell you something that will usually kind of make that a bit clearer. I've been to a few plant swaps so far in the last few years. And the one plant that you can almost guarantee will consistently be there from multiple people at each plant swap to swap is the Syngonium albo. So that tells you something. It means that this is a relatively fast growing plant and easy to propagate as well. So that's all I'm going to say on the topic. Let's move on to the next one. So in terms of availability, quite smoothly on from the previous topic, when I first got this plant, however many years ago, I think it was a, a, at least two years ago, if not probably longer actually, this plant has been in my collection for a while now. This plant wasn't the hardest thing to find online. You couldn't find it in plant stores. You couldn't find it in garden centers. You couldn't find it in big box stores. You could find it from the more kind of discerning online plant stores, but it wasn't absolutely everywhere. At the moment, I have seen this specific plant multiple times now in my local garden center. And I have mentioned about this local garden center. It does occasionally bring in some rare or slightly difficult to find plants more so than you might find in other places. But I do think, granted, this isn't a plant that I think at the moment you're going to see in the big box stores, at least in the UK. If you're from the US and that has changed, I'm thinking, was it Lowe's in the States that you tend to get a lot of planty things? Let us know down below if that's now started stocking the Albo Syngonium and if it's kind of vaguely affordable. But when I first got this plant, it was in the low triple digits for not a very big plant, to be honest. And that's why I'm saying, eh, considering how easy it is to probably get how fast it grows, why, 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 why was it that price, basically? Because since I've started chopping and popping my one in the last year and a half, purely because I'm just like, instead of just kind of going, I just, uh, I should really be just giving it to people at this point, but I keep keeping it and keep growing it. I'm just like, eventually I'm going to give it to somebody. It hasn't happened yet, but I do need to like get rid of some of them. Um, it shouldn't be that expensive, I don't think. And yes, the prices have gone down. I think even now when I'm finding it in the local garden center, I'm finding it kind of mid to high double digits. I still think that's a bit expensive, but it is a relatively big and bushy plant for the size of what I'm seeing being sold now for the price that's being sold now. It's a good deal compared to what it was when I was first looking. Do I still think it could be cheaper? Yes. I really do. It might be because if people are trying to grow this, if growers are trying to grow this, because of its propensity to try to go green as much as it is, and they have to kind of keep an eye on it and keep chopping it back, maybe it's a bit more kind of admin heavy as a plant. They need to kind of like hover over it a bit more to make sure that the variegation stays as much as possible because that's probably what's going to ultimately sell the plant. But yeah, I mean, it's becoming a bit more available. I'd be really interested to know in your part of the world what this plant is in terms of availability. Now moving on to pests with this one, and this one is an interesting one. I don't think I've ever had mealybugs on this one. I have maybe occasionally had spider mites, but again, they were easily treatable on this one. Thrips wasn't one that was particularly attracted to this. But I have had a bit of an issue with whitefly in the conservatory. And I know not everybody will kind of suffer from whitefly. One thing I will say, however, is out of 
all of my plants, the plant that they love to go and sit on is this one specifically. I do not know why. Some of the discoloration that you could see on leaves was because of the white fly. It got to that level of ridiculousness. At the moment, one of my previous video when I was talking about pest management, and I'll link the video up here as well if you haven't seen it, but when I was talking about pest management, I was talking about more kind of flying pests like the fungus gnats and the white flies get, getting something like a pingicular or pinguicular, a carnivorous plant where I think it's called the butterwort, where it's almost like a bit of a yellow sticky trap. I have got one in here to deal with the white flies. I don't have a lot of fungus gnat issues generally in here, but to deal with the white flies and that sits right next to this plant. And it's still, even though that plant, that carnivorous pingicular, is doing the most as you can barely see leaf now from the amount of dead white flies on it. This is still quite covered and I keep trying to treat it and treat it over and over again. If anybody's ever dealt with white fly in an indoor environment and you could suggest something that worked like a charm for you, please do. I have tried predatory insects. That hasn't worked particularly well. Let me know what you do and what has worked for you. I would love to know. But yeah, this plant has and you can see that there are kind of the remnants of eggs at the back of the leaves essentially so yeah it's it's not the prettiest of thing it it won't kill the plant off i don't think as a pest unless it becomes massively overwhelming in here and at the moment i'm still staying on top of it but yeah white flies is an interesting one of this one this is one that it was attracted to it if you've had other experiences with the pest again do let us know down below i'd be very curious to find out And then looking at something like accessories with this plant. So you can see with this one, and this is probably one of the few ones that I have that I have left to trail just purely because I wanted to see if the leaf size got smaller. Uh, spoiler, it did, because some of these leaves at the very top are considerably larger. You might be able to see there. And if I show you one of the leaves at the bottom, it is considerably smaller. So yes, it does become a bit smaller, quite where the diminishing factor would be that they won't get any smaller than that. And I don't think I've quite reached that level yet. I'm pretty sure this can get even smaller. But I wanted something to cascade down from a really awkward shelf where I've got it, where most other plants wouldn't do particularly well because of the light levels and the inconsistency of the light levels where it's getting. But this is like the Syngonium Albo is like my workhorse. So I can put it anywhere and it will do fine. This one is in terracotta in soil. I've mentioned I grow them in pond as well with a water reservoir, that's fine. I've had them in plastic pots, that's fine. I think I've had them in a net pot, that was fine. It's not a particularly demanding plant. I have only ever grown them up a support stick, janky support sticks for the wind, for the old people that have been here for a while, <laughs> for the true OGs of the channel. I've never put this on a uh, moss pole. I've never put this on a plank. If you have, please share your experiences. I'd be really curious to see if the leaves would get much, much bigger. And I don't know how much the morphology of the leaves will change, because I know with a lot of Syngonium, what you see here, which is that kind of arrowhead, and that's why sometimes the Syngonium's common name is arrowhead vine, will change when it matures into more of a three lobe situation. So the, the two top bits here will split off and the one bottom bit, so it will be like a T basically. But uh, I don't know if anybody's got it to that level and I don't know if anybody would necessarily want to get it at that level. Most people quite like the shape as it is. I also don't know how much of that variegation would stay on. So that's why I'm really curious. If you've got that, do let us all know down below. So coming into final thoughts with this plant. Now I'll do the thing that I always do and it's if I didn't have this plant but I knew what I know now, would I purchase this plant? Yes, I probably would. There's a slight bit of a hesitation there purely because it is a lovely plant to grow and it propagates easily and it grows like a weed. The slight hesitation there is because it grows like a weed. I almost have to actively manage this and granted I've created more problems by having more propagates that are growing into bigger plants that I then need to also chop and propagate. It's a problem, 
granted, I think for some people that might not be a problem, but it is for me at the moment to try and stay on top of it. But that's the only reason why you're seeing a slight hesitation from me there is I don't know if I would put myself in that situation or whether or not, and I know this is sacrilege of all sacrilege, whether or not when I first got the plant, if I had known what I know now is whether or not I would have just topped it and given it out to friends, not propagated it myself, or put it in the compost bin. Uh, just so I can keep one plant rather than having multiples. Maybe I would keep one propagate. But isn't that how we all start with just the one propagate and all of a sudden you've got four versions of your plant and you don't know what to do with them? I'm just saying, I'm just trying to keep it real. <laughs> it might just be me. I don't think it's just me, but it might just be me <laughs> on this one. Um, and then when it comes to a score from like zero being the worst, 10 being the best, where would I benchmark this? This would be a solid seven or an eight, I'd say. It's it's a good, consistent grower. It can be a fast grower. It's, I'm taking off some points because you do need to stay on top of that. Um, urgency towards it wanting to revert sometimes so I'll take some points off of that and but yeah it is kind of a really cool plant I'll take off some other points as well because syngoniums and I know there will be a collective buy from everybody don't quite excite me the same way that they excite everybody else um, I do have a few syngoniums and it's me more actively trying to like syngoniums a bit more and yes I know that there can be some variety but generally for me syngoniums they're all pretty similar in shape I know there's some variations in leaf shape and I have got some of them but they all look kind of similar the only difference is tends to be the color or the patchiness of color and all of these things nah, 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 nah. whilst with things like Philodendrons, you can get a different variety of looks and feels for philodendron the same time, same to a certain point with Anthurium, same with Alocasia. I think people are going to come for me in this video. I could already see the comment section blowing up. But yeah, it's it's a good plant. I, I would never regret having my Albo. And yeah, it's a, it's a cool plant to have around. If you haven't got one already, see if you can get one. I would also say at this point, if you've got some planty friends, have a chat with them because a lot of us probably do have this plant now and if theirs grows anything like mine, they might have some propagates that they'd be willing to give you or sell to you or anything like that or swap with you. <laughs> Reach out to them. You might be doing them a favor, trust me. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this specific plant. If you've got your own reviews, as I keep saying in these videos, please do let them down below. I know there's a lot of people that would like to hear your experiences, not just mine. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.